learned not just about trying to find a story to share, but about life in general, that constantly pushing, constantly forcing, is at least for me, has not been the best approach. I find it interesting that I still find it unnatural to just relax and allow it to come to me, but that's where the best stuff happens. That's why I don't like to be called a motivational speaker. Motivation to me is, is a push strategy. It's trying to convince myself to do something I really don't want to do or to stop something that I'm not really sure I want to stop versus inspiration, something that lights up a part of who I uniquely am and pulls me forward. Another way to say it is to trust yourself to know it when you see it or anything in life, any decisions, especially the big ones to just my mother used to say to me, still does, you'll know when you know. You'll just know. But that's sort of a deep level of awareness in yourself and trusting what those inspired impulses that, that really resonate with you and pull you forward are versus you're trying to motivate and push yourself to do the things that you maybe think that you are supposed to do. So here we are reinventing, trying to get ready to relaunch in the COVID-19 area, keep you safe, but also offer what we offer, somehow get online and sort through all those logistics and like anything that you leave for a little while, it's, uh, <laughs> it takes a bit to get back on the bike. And that happened to me too. I used to do this sort of on automatic pilot. I couldn't even figure it out. But we got it going. We got it pieced back together and worked with Natalie and Ricky and Steve and Elizabeth to get them set. Got all the social media stuff ready. Got all the speaking applications in and the ticketing system set and got in here with Pete and with Brendan and how we were going to sort out the venue and all of that seemed ready to go. But then as we clicked over into last week, I realized, I don't know what the hell I'm going to talk about, but it'll have to be something. So old Kevin would have been, well, you push. You know, you, you need to check that off the list. You've got to keep working until it's done. But I just, I wasn't sure. I had a little inkling. I knew I wanted to use the music that you just heard. So I created a social media post that said that the title of the talk was going to be Gonna Fly Now, which is the name of the Rocky theme. But the rest I didn't know. So maybe the responsible thing, given that I was asking you to buy tickets and invest your time to come and join us here, would have been to sit down and by God write the thing until I had it. So what I did was I went on a little mini vacation with Caroline instead. <laughs> but yeah, right? <laughs> no regrets. But see, I was trusting myself to just to not force it to know it when I saw it. And I was thinking, well, I'm going to have a few days with Sweet Caroline, so I'm going to come away with any number of stories that we might be able to tell. We went to Blue Mountain and Collingwood up on the high ropes courses. And has anybody ever been there to Blue Mountain where they've got the roller, the coaster thing that goes down the hill? Thank you. I didn't scream, but I sure heard somebody else going down that hill. We rode segways. <laughs> I noticed that footage hasn't been released yet. Is it coming out? Maybe. <laughs> but there was lots of opportunity for good stories. But still, none of them really lit me up. None of them said that this is, this is the one. So the week was going on, and I didn't tell Caroline this, but I was becoming a little bit more aware that our event was getting closer and that I was going to need to come up with something eventually. <laughs> and we clicked over into Wednesday last week. Tickets were starting to sell. Brendan had the online broadcast going. People from other countries were getting set to sit in with us, and thank you again for being here with us. And I didn't know what I was going to talk about. But again, I just leave it to the universe. I'll know when I know. And then we were just relaxing on the deck at Mom's Cottage up in Georgian Bay, and I think it was Wednesday morning, just sitting there, just enjoying each other's company and enjoying the day. But I noticed something out of the corner of my eye. And I look, and about an arm's length away, pretty much equidistant between Caroline and myself, was the most vibrantly colored, beautiful monarch butterfly that I've ever seen. And it was obvious that it had just come out of the chrysalis. If I wanted to grab it and pick it up, I could have. It was flexing its wings really slowly. Have you ever seen a, a butterfly right out of the chrysalis? It's just really slow, just kind of like this. And the, the orange, like you can imagine it on a sunny day, it, the, the wings, they looked like they were made of velvet. And the brightest, crispest orange you've ever seen. 
And these white dots, and Caroline looks at, oh, that's a, that's a she, that's a female. I wonder where she's going. And I, I was just stared fascinated at this thing. I took a picture of it, looking up. I, like, I lay, literally laid down on the deck and took a picture of it up with Caroline in the background. And then for the first time ever, took a selfie with the butterfly. If any of you are connected with me on Facebook, I put pictures up there. But we didn't see it come up. I don't remember it leaving. Did you see it leave? I don't remember it, but it was, and it was just this really cool moment. And I thought about that butterfly and I couldn't get it out of my mind. But I knew then what going to fly now meant, what we were going to talk about here today. I wonder how much you know about how a caterpillar actually turns into a butterfly. So imagine if you were a little caterpillar, which is basically like, you know, a it was sort of a glorified worm, really. It's a worm with legs, right? An antenna? The caterpillars are cool enough, but they're kind of limited in their experience, either to the ground or the branch or whatever they're on. It's, you know, looking up at everything. The world's pretty big. They're slow, which is okay, but you can't cover a whole lot of ground real fast. But then they spin themselves into this cocoon. They go into isolation, if you will. They quarantine themselves. But now here's the really cool part. Do you know what happens after that? These caterpillars, they have these enzymes that literally disintegrate their own tissue. They literally melt themselves down. If you were to cut open a chrysalis at the right time, or depending on how you look at it, the exact wrong time, please don't do this, the caterpillar slash butterfly would literally just drain out just a bunch of goo. It literally goes into isolation and melts itself down. But then it begins to transform through its own cells and its own enzymes. And the wings are formed and all of those other things like I described. And when it's ready, it comes out of that chrysalis, but it doesn't fly right away. It does what that monarch did that was sitting between me and Caroline and just, it needs to dry its wings. It needs to just get some, I don't know if butterflies have blood flow <laughs> into their wings. But they literally, they go from a very limited experience to isolated, to completely melting down anything that they physically knew, to transforming into something completely different with the ability to change their entire world, to take to the sky, to have a completely different perspective of their experience from that time forward. Talk about going to fly now. Well, we have all had the experience where we have been forced into isolation. We have been forced to kind of break ourselves down, maybe not physically, some of us have to some extent, but to really find out about what matters most, who we really are, what kind of world we want to be a part of and what we want to co-create, what sort of experiences that we want to have going forward. And we literally now, I wonder, I was thinking as we come back, you didn't have to come tonight and sit there with masks on and be some of the leaders and saying, we're going to put this thing together and we're going to start driving forward, but you did. So to me, you're not all that different from that butterfly just going like this. I don't know what the world's going to look like going forward. But I'll be damned if I'm just going to sit and wait for it to happen. Let's see what these wings can do. And we have four incredible individuals here with us tonight that are going to all share their stories that to some extent, I think, because all of us have these stories, involve some form of transformation and new opportunity and new perspective of the blue sky that waits ahead for all of us. And again, I want to thank you so much for being here and helping us form this new future. And to you watching online as well, as we all find our wings together, you're going to find these stories so empowering tonight, you're in for a real treat. So my question before we get into them is, who else is ready to fly?